You want to switch industries, but you have no experience. You might have more experience than you realize. Hi, I'm Taha from Answer in Progress, where we make videos taking people on a journey from question to answer. In this video, we talk to a career expert so we can figure out how we can think about our skills when we move to a new industry. A recent poll showed that half of American employees considered making a career change and 44% are already planning to make the switch. So you're not alone if you're having a bit of a career crisis, but how do you join an industry that you have no experience in? To answer this question, I spoke to Asila Garcia, a Google recruiter with a lot of experience on this topic. Hi, my name is Isela Garcia and I am a recruiter here at Google. I help to screen, interview, and identify candidates and support them through the interview process. A common concern when changing careers is that if we don't have any formal experience, we're starting from square one. Fortunately, this isn't necessarily true. My typical advice for anyone who is making a career pivot or transition is I like to consider sort of three main pillars. First and foremost, I always encourage folks to consider their trajectory of what it is that they're trying to anchor toward. So what is it that in your desired industry or role are required skills that are needed to be successful? Some of these are gonna be hard skills, maybe certification, potentially years of experience. Once you get an understanding of what is desired in this space, then you want to take an assessment of what it is that you're bringing to the table. Oftentimes what I'm encouraging my hiring managers to look for are things called core competencies. Things like critical thinking, problem solving, everything from like budgeting to even like sales, for example. I'm someone who started in like retail sales, for example. I was on the sales floor talking to people, helping them with makeup. And years later, those same skills of uncovering needs and desires of someone's you know, skincare or makeup routine landed to being able to uncover what it is that folks wanna do in their careers and what they're good at. Ideally, you also wanna get creative when you're thinking about your own experiences. So you may not only think of your typical nine to five when you're factoring in your own experiences and skills. Maybe an ad hoc project, a side hustle, or something else might feed into the desired role or industry that you're trying to anchor towards. There are many skills that are transferable and can be demonstrated in other industries. Some of the top skills that employers look for include being able to support and lead a team, being able to make decisions and solve problems, and being able to plan and organize work. These are skills that can be demonstrated in all industries and outside of work. Career capital is a conceptual framework that we can use to understand the real value of being able to build a career. Knowing your why is examining the internal and external factors that are driving your career and need for change. Knowing why you want to change is an important part of finding the right fit for you in the future. Considering your why helps you gain clarity on not only why you are motivated and interested in your work, but also helps you gain an understanding of how the industry and labor market are behaving. Knowing who is about knowing who in your network can help you move forward in your career. This could be people from your previous industry, family, friends, and community that could introduce you to opportunities or give you insight and advice from previous experience. Knowing how is the career capital you gain by learning specialist and transferable skills that you can present to new employers. So if we combine Isela's three pillars with the career capital framework, we can support our career transition by aiming our anchor and understanding why we're changing jobs. Next, we can assess our current skills and abilities and understand how they transfer over. Finally, we can look at all of our experiences and network to see what and who can support our career transition. Even without a network, it's possible to find a place in a new industry by combining what you can offer with what the industry is looking for. Okay, so with all that knowledge, I've decided to make a job application for a fictional person named Andy. This is Andy the accountant. He loves watching films and he wants to move into the film industry. He dreams of becoming the next big film director. However, he's been working in accounting for the last 20 years. Initially, it seems like accounting and the film industry have nothing in common. So how does Andy make the jump from two things that seem vastly opposite? If we follow the career capital framework, Andy might actually have a lot more experience than he thinks. So let's take this step by step. 
Step one is knowing your why, examining the internal and external factors driving your career change. Maybe Andy is looking for a new challenge, something more creative and exciting than his current role. Maybe he doesn't enjoy the office culture and is looking for something a little bit more flexible and freelance. Next, he does some research into the film industry. He finds that film production needs big crews of people, different locations and dynamic timelines. He also notes the lack of traditional work hours, and while potentially he could be working more unsociable hours, he also finds that this aligns more with the reasons of his career change, and a more dynamic work environment is exactly what he's looking for. Identifying these things provides clarity on the types of jobs he would be interested in within the film industry. Step two is knowing how. This is all about the skills and experience that you have that will give you a leg up in joining a new industry. Okay, so Andy has a good idea of what the industry is like, and he's also figured out what type of career he wants within that industry. And even though he's never worked in the film industry, it doesn't mean that he doesn't have the skills and experience that are needed for working in the film industry. I mean, he's been dealing with spreadsheets and working with contracts for the best part of 20 years. It's safe to say that he's got an eye for detail, and that's something that's valuable in film production. So while Andy has a lot of transferable skills, he might not be able to get a job as a big film director immediately, but he can now take the first steps towards his new career ambitions and build the industry-specific skills needed towards his goals. One option for Andy is to find a job within the industry that is similar to the one that he does currently, for example, a production accountant. Another option would be looking for a job that requires a strong familiarity with spreadsheets. Something like a junior position in a production department might be perfect. He might not be familiar with best practices or industry jargon, but his transferable skills will allow him to handle the work well. Both of these options get Andy close to film directors and creatives and allow him to build a familiarity with the industry. The third step is knowing who, otherwise known as social capital. It's very possible that Andy doesn't know anyone in the film industry. However, it's important to not assume that that's the case. His best bet is to make sure that his network, the people who are gonna be most supportive of his career change, are aware of his career aspirations and that he's looking for assistance. You never know who someone else might know and who can help. For Andy, my recommendation is to like lean into his analytical acumen, right? Like I still think that's really important. I think in that sense, it's it's good to think of Andy's ad to that space. But in, in some ways I feel like kind of jealous of Andy. Like I think he has that like business chops that I feel he might be uh, pretty well off in, in that space. Switching industries can be daunting. It seems like you're leaving everything behind to start from scratch, but that's just not true. Your previous skills and experience will be made up of specialist skills from your industry and transferable skills that you'll be able to take to the industry you're planning on joining. By thinking about my experience and Andy's experience, not as day-to-day -day tasks that I do in my job, but as abstract skills that I'm building as I work, has made me realize that not all my skills become obsolete when I decide to make a career change. It's really opened my eyes on how I could be a suitable candidate for a variety of jobs in a variety of careers. And I hope Andy was a good example of how you can manage a career change using the Career Capital Framework and Azilla's three pillars. If you're interested in hearing from recruiters at Google and other major companies on how to prepare for a job interview, what to write in a cover letter, and how to prepare for a career change, you can find a lot more resources in the playlist on screen right now or in the description below. In upcoming videos, we're gonna talk about how to gain new skills while working and how to gain qualifications without going back to school. So if you're interested in any of that, make sure you're subscribed.